Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on the show for the first time, uh, the one, the only Blackie Lawless from Wasp. Yeah. Blackie, a pleasure to have you. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. We want to know right off the top, how are you doing these days and how are you feeling? Um, we're getting there. You know, it's, um, it's, it's been a long, long road. It's, um, you know, when you start dealing with compound injuries, which I, I mean, I've had over the years doing what we do, it's, it's fairly common. I mean, I've had the same orthopedic guy for over 30 years and, you know, I, and I'm not joking at the end of every tour, I crawl up on his table and say, fix me. You know, because any band that, that does a lot on stage that, you know, runs around is, is pretty active. You know, any band, any athlete, any dancer, you're all going to have injuries, you know, and it happens. And this is just, you know, part of it. But it's the first time I've had a compound situation like this. And it's um, it's been an eye-opening experience. And it's it really, it's been a struggle. You know, there's no two ways about it. But I've got probably the best people in the country working on me, and I don't say that lightly. I mean, these guys, they're fantastic, and uh, we're getting where we need to go. So all things considered, we're doing good. What kind of road to recovery do you have? Like, what do you foresee? You're back, back in business, let's say, in 12 months from now, six months from now? No, it's the – I've had two surgeries – and the first one was in mid-August, and then the second one was two weeks later. And so then, you know, you have a, 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 a preliminary healing period you have to go through, which, um, you know, is about four weeks. And then you go into physical therapy, and then that's when the real fun begins. Because yeah. it's, I don't know of any other way to put it, but, you know, anybody that's ever been through serious rehab before, it's... um it's challenging because I've, you know, I've been a gym rat my whole life. You know, I've constantly lived in a gym, but there's a difference between doing this and doing what you do in a gym. Because when you're in a gym, you're usually concentrating on repetitions. This is not that. This is a combination of yoga, Pilates, and what you would normally do in a gym. And the, the movements are considerably slower and it's designed to target specific muscles. And you've heard the expression, you know, you're using muscles you didn't even know you have. <laughs> that is really what this is. And especially, you know, you know, for someone who's been in a gym so much in their life, to start using them in ways you've never used before, it's, uh, it's an eye-opening experience, to say the least. And it's, it's frustrating in a lot of ways because you're trying to, to do things that, had at one time you know you didn't even think about and then you go to try to do it now and it's like there's there's certain things that just won't work and the trick is they keep one of the things they emphasized to me when we first started was this concept of turning the muscles on because what happens when you've had injuries um the the muscles literally want to go to sleep Mm. and so the trick is to to turn them on without them feeling like they're being assaulted. And and like I said, the guys I'm working with, they're the best in the country. As a matter of fact, um, it was interesting because I was watching uh, Monday Night Football about six weeks ago when Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles. 48 hours later, they had him in the same hospital down in Marina Del Rey where I was at, same doctors working on him. And I, I saw about 10, 12 days ago, he's on TV, he's thrown a football already off of his back foot. You know, So wow. the science of sports medicine is so much more advanced than regular medicine. And, and it has to be because, you know, you got players, you know, or performers that the whole object is because of the amount of income they generate, whatever. You got to get these guys back out on the field. And so the the science of what sports medicine is is i mean pardon the pun but it is literally cutting edge and there's i anybody that's had injuries or anything like that i highly recommend going that route as opposed to to go through traditional medicine 
And right. can you just w- walk us through? Because, you know, we had our tickets for the 40th uh, anniversary. We're following you in Europe. And it seemed like you tried everything humanly possible just to keep the shows going. So go ahead. The first thing that happened was I got a, I was doing or seeing chiropractors. And they were literally, they were coming to the shows. This, to give you the, the full scope of it, 10 years ago, I broke my right femur. And I broke it really bad. Uh, it was, I got knocked out of the back of a truck and fell into a pile of bricks mm-hmm. and I was like falling into to jagged knives and the femur snapped on the right side, about two inches below the hip and it split lengthwise all the way down to the knee. I mean, it was a nasty, nasty break. I've got an 18 inch titanium rod in there right now. It's going to be with me for the duration. But the problem that came after that, it took about a year for that to heal. I wore a quarter of an inch lift in my left, or excuse me, in my right shoe for nine years after that. Well, we went and did a CT scan last summer, and the two legs were less than a, than a millimeter of, uh, difference from each other, so it was determined I didn't need that lift anymore. So on a doctor's advice, I took that lift out, which was a major mistake, because what had happened in those nine years, the body will compensate for anything foreign that you, you try to, to use it to make adjustments with. And in this case, my pelvis rotated forward, you know, from wearing that lift. And then when I took the lift out, the body doesn't know what to do, and it's trying to readjust. And so what it did is, is my back kept going out, and I'm seeing chiropractors for it. We get to Madrid in Spain, and I get a chiropractor that comes in, and this kid was, I mean, he was unbelievably strong. I thought, honestly, I thought a gorilla had all of me. Oh. And he didn't speak any English. And I'm trying to get this kid to stop. And I'm literally, I, I had to start fighting him, you know, to get him to, to lay off. He ruptured one of the discs in my back. Oh. And so now, and I'd never had a ruptured disc before, and I didn't know what nerve pain was about. I'd heard about it. But until you've gone through it, you can't imagine what it's like. And the pain goes from your lower back all the way down your leg into your ankle. And imagine, I mean, the best way I could describe it would be, imagine the worst toothache you've ever had, but it goes all the way from your lower back down your leg into your ankle, and you can't get it to stop. And it's it's just, it's excruciating beyond belief. So we found... Uh, another sports medicine place in Berlin, and they started treating me, and they started giving me epidurals. Uh, over the course of the tour, I had eight epidurals to get me through that tour, but they recommended that I stop the tour, and I really didn't want to do that. I mean, you have people that, that buy tickets. I mean, not dissimilar to what you guys are saying. People wait a long time. A lot of them make travel plans, you know, they fly, they do all kinds of things. You want to do your best to to not disrupt that if you don't have to. Not to mention, you know, it's 40th anniversary tour. I'm only going to get one time to do this in my life. And then we had all had, you know, in the COVID situation, you know, we all had three years where nothing happened. You know, so, and quite honestly... I got about 30 families that are dependent on me, you know, between the band and the road crew and, you know, office workers and things like that. So how do you go to people and say, you know what, my back hurts. I don't feel like playing. It's a lot of pressure. Uh, That's, that's, uh, you can't really do that. So they advised me in Berlin to stop the tour. And I said, well, how bad can it be? I said, you do your thing and I'll do my thing. And, you know, I'll kind of cool it on the movement and you just keep me going. And they said, no, you don't understand. This is going to get worse if you don't stop. And I thought, well, you know, that's they're just being, you know, overly cautious. Well, what happened? I ended up rupturing a second disc, and I ended up breaking my back. Oh, yeah. And so we, we got through the tour except for the last five shows. And I literally had to sit in a chair the last five shows to get through because I couldn't stand up anymore. We get home from the tour. And immediately, you know, I go in, you know, with the orthopedic guys and they told me, they said, you got to do this and you got to do this now, because if you don't, you're going to be in a wheelchair in a month. Oh. And so within the span of two weeks, I had had two major surgeries and, uh, 
you know, that brings us pretty much to the point where we are now. So getting it all straightened out is, is a good thing. You know, the, like I said, the doctors that have worked on me are the best in the country. Uh, so I'm really, really thankful for that. But, you know, I've been through physical therapy before, and it's, it's a tough road, you know, because, like I said, it, it's going to hurt. There's no two ways about it. But you have to do it to get back to where you need to go to get your body right. Part of the problem that we had was when I took that lift out, I really needed to go back to physical therapy then, but no one told me that, uh-huh. you know, so I let the body, you know, it was literally shocked into adjustment at that point, And that's what the body does. And it rebels, you know, because it's trying to protect itself. So that leads us to where we are right now. And, and you know, ironically, you know, none of this is age related. You know, we did bone density studies on me, all kinds of stuff, everything is where it should be. You know, this was just a series of unfortunate events that just felt like dominoes. You know, Blackie, people have committed suicide over back pains. You know, it's funny you say that because they warned me about that in Berlin. Yeah. Because, I mean, hold on to your hat. But yeah. to get through that tour, and I'm I'm not belly aching here. I'm just I'm going to give you the no, facts. No, no, this is the facts. Any, okay. Anybody that might you know hear this interview, it, it could be of of help to them because one of the things they warned me, they said people commit suicide over this. It's so bad, and until you've been through it, which I never had been, you can't understand the uh, excruciating is. That's one word to describe it, but it's worse than that. It's just, it's something you can't escape. And it's like, I've broken all kinds of bones and had all kinds of injuries. Nothing compares to this. Over the course of that tour, I took 340 opium tablets to get me through it. And there were times I was taking five a night. And what happens is I do the shows and I get the back, you know, that nerve would get all irritated again. And there would be times I couldn't sleep until noon the next day. And oh. that was that was a fairly common occurrence. And it's just like there's no position you can get in that stops it. And you're laying there, and it's like the pain's off the charts. And you're listening, or in your head, you're hearing what those doctors are saying about people committing suicide over this. And you start to understand because what got me through it was I knew that eventually I would get better. But if it was a situation where someone had no hope and that that's what it was going to be, I don't think you could live your life like that. It just, it wouldn't be worth it. And I'm, I'm somebody that's a great lover of life, but when you're dealing with something like that, that's inescapable, uh, I can, I could certainly understand how somebody would, would look at the alternative. I'm just trying to think of that, that flight back from Europe. I mean, that's, that's a long flight to get to you get, get you back home. That must well, have been uh, murder. Well, like I said, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> I had help. Let's put it that way, you know, to get me through all that stuff. And it's like, but you know what sucks about it? I, I'm not a recreational drug taker. I never have been. You know, I'm the kind of person that I, I like my wits about me, you know, and I like to think clearly and, you know, to just to, to constantly have to stay doped up because that's what it, it comes down to, you know, just to be able to get through it. You know, they told me when I came out of the first surgery, they said all the pain's going to be gone. And I found that really hard to believe because I'd been about three months in that process. Three months is an eternity when you're going through that. And I woke up in recovery, and they were right. The pain was gone. And it was just like, wow, what a concept uh, to be normal again. Wow. You know, yeah. and then the bad news was they came in, you know, in, in the recovery and said, well, you know, this surgery went fine, and we're very happy, but you're going to have to have another one. You know, and it's like, that's not really what you want to hear while you're in recovery because you're thinking, okay, we're over this hurdle. You know, now we're into recovery and, you know, into, into physical therapy and, you know, it's downhill from here. But, you know, but like I said, two weeks later, they had to go back in and, um, you know, but here we are now. So, like I said, all things considered, uh, I've been pretty blessed. Do you, do you see yourself on stage in 12 months from now? 
uh, less, you know, because I mean the the pace they've got me on right now. Um, well, let's put it this way. I mean, they've got me where my left knee, and and to do this, you've got to stretch your back considerably. My left knee is about ten inches away from being able to touch my left shoulder. They told me that when they're finished with me, my left knee will touch my right shoulder. Hmm. And I just laughed and I said, "Well, I couldn't do that before yeah. the surgery." Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm, so I'm trying to figure like, it out it's, myself. Yeah. Right. You know. Well, <laughs> you, you got to contort to get in a position like that. And um, but you know, one of the things they said that. They were constantly amazed by watching what I was doing in there because they said, your flexibility is really good because as people get older, they lose flexibility. Plus, when you're tall, because I'm 6'4", yeah. you know, you just don't have the flexibility most people have. And I attribute that to what we do on stage because it's, it keeps you limber, you know, over this uh, the period of time. Plus, you know, when you go into rehab, it makes it easier because the muscle memory is there from all the years of doing it and all that. So, I mean, they tell me they're thrilled. I mean, I get frustrated because I want to run literally, you know, before I'm able to do it. And there's things I want to do that I ask them, you know, can we accelerate this? And they just shake their head, no, you're not ready for that yet. <laughs> and it's like, you know, so I'm chomping at the bit to go. And it's like, no, they're telling me, no, you got to stay with the program here and you'll get, you'll get where you want to go. Just trust us. Yeah. All right. On that note, let's get a little more positive here. And that is positive, but a little more positive. That Wasp. is positive. <laughs> yeah, that is positive, <laughs> but let's get positive. positive plus. Wasp announces the Seven Savage Deluxe box set, eight LPs from 1984 to 1992 from their capital years. Uh, they're a limited edition, right? 200 copies worldwide. They're, they were released on uh, Friday, the 27th of October. Um, I, let's talk about this. I, I know there's a lot of positive about uh, you recovering, but here's even better news. How's that? Um, tell us about this box set. Why now? And what what are people in for in regards to the sound quality of this new box set versus what? was released in the past well to my understanding it's 2000 copies it's not 200 so, oh okay sorry because, sorry sorry yeah that would my that bad my bad my bad far. yeah yeah but you know they've gone in you know obviously they've remastered everything which can enhance the process i've heard it before where it's actually hurt recordings before but if you take your time and you do it correctly what it does is it, it freshens up the recording and you end up hearing things that maybe you didn't hear, you know, on the first pressings. Plus, technology's changed now where, you know, you can actually, if the mixes are correct to begin with, you can hear space on them that you just didn't hear before. And I know that I'm getting into kind of a, a technical world here, but for the average person out there, what it means is it sounds better and it sounds richer, you know. So, you know, that, that's the whole bonus of doing that. So this is this is concentrating on your the very first albums, and uh, I was just wondering, like overall, uh, uh, you know, what 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 was you thinking of uh, when Chris was in the band? I mean, his guitar style and how much did that contribute to uh, the overall Wasp sound? Because uh, uh, we we've got comments uh, of him touring that uh, I never realized he was so loved and admired as a guitar player. So a lot of the feedback we got in recent years. So. Well, when the band started, we had three guitar players because I'm a guitar player by trade. Right. You know, so when uh, putting the band together, I did it based on chemistry, you know, of who I thought could work and play off of each other because that's what you need to be able to do. You need to have guys that can complement each other. Having three guitar players, you, can, you know, that can either be a blessing or a curse. So I had the, the flexibility within the band of having multiple guitar styles. So, like I said, um, I think that that really, it's worth noting, you know, of who did what on those kind of things because that's what gave us the, the flexibility and the versatility to do a lot of that stuff. <laughs> 